Breaking news. Aluminium is a free agent. Johnny Ive will step down as Apple's chief design officer. The company just announced his departure in a post on their website, which states that he will be leaving Apple to start an independent design firm. According to the post, Apple will be one of Johnny Ive's first and main clients, with Apple CEO Tim Cook pointing out that Apple will continue to benefit from Johnny's talent by working directly with him on exclusive projects and through the ongoing work of the brilliant and passionate design team he's built. But that's still a huge blow for the company. For more than 20 years, Johnny Ive has been instrumental in the success of the company and its products. The London-born designer is the creative genius behind Apple's most iconic products. The original iMac, the iPod, pretty much every iteration of the iPhone, the MacBook, the Apple Watch, and his talents go beyond the products. He even had a hand in designing the iOS interface and Apple Park, Apple's new campus in Cupertino. And let's not forget his other big contribution, his iconic British accent, which has provided the narration for a lot of Apple's promotional videos. Each refinement serves to bring absolute unity and efficiency to the design. Oh yeah, and he also has a Sir before his name, so it's Sir Johnny Ive to you. He was known to be extremely close to Steve Jobs and apparently had a very similar view of the world. In fact, Jobs once said that Ive had more operational power than anyone else at Apple other than himself. I'm most proud of the lasting work we have done to create a design team, process, and culture at Apple that is without peer. Today it is stronger, more vibrant, and more talented than at any point in Apple's history, said Ive in a statement. So what happens next? Apple has not announced a replacement for Ive yet, and in the meantime, the design team will be led by Evans Hankey, Vice President of Industrial Design, and Alan Dye, Vice President of Human Interface Design, both of whom will report to Apple COO Jeff Williams. For his part, Ive will remain at Apple until later this year, and will officially launch his design studio in 2020. It seems like over the past few weeks, we've been focusing on iPhone rumors. So today, I'm gonna to switch things up and shine the spotlight on one of Apple's rising stars, the Apple Watch. This little device has continued to grow since its inception about five years ago, and you can bet it's not going anywhere anytime soon, with Apple already dominating the smartwatch market, something the company can't really say about the mobile phone market. So there's a huge potential here. Now it's not a given that we will see an Apple Watch Series 5 in September, but we've pretty much gotten an Apple Watch every year since launch, so my bet is that we will. So what novelties will it bring? There's one thing we know for a fact. Apple is moving to make the Apple Watch more independent from the iPhone. Watch OS 6 had plenty of proofs of this. The Apple Watch will soon have its own standalone app store. You have more native apps like the calculator app and voice memos, over the air software updates, and now workout summaries that will actually stay on the watch instead of disappearing to the activities app on your iPhone. But that's all software. There are still plenty of other hardware features that put it behind the iPhone. One of those is the camera. Now over the years, there's been plenty of rumors about a FaceTime camera on the Apple Watch, but on the watch itself, so right on the screen. And for anything more than FaceTime, it would seem kind of awkward to take a picture. You'd have to move your wrist in these awkward contorted positions. And now it seems like Apple may have a solution for that, according to a patent published Tuesday by the US Patent and Trademark Office. The patent shows the camera on the watch band instead of on the screen. The design would be malleable, so you could position it anywhere, so you could put it up or down, and it would have a 360 degree viewing angle, so a sensor on the back and a sensor on the front. According to the patent, in order to activate the camera, you would just pinch the watch band, or you could also do this via voice command. But just because Apple files a patent doesn't mean the feature will come to fruition. And even if it does, I don't see it happening for at least another few years. So what can we expect this year? There is one more thing I know for certain about the Apple Watch, and it's that it will continue to push better health features. Watch OS 6 introduced the Cycle app for tracking your menstrual period. But again, that's software. And I don't see that as being a sole reason why you would upgrade to a Series 5. So what is this year's ECG? Well, we've heard rumblings about blood pressure and glucose monitoring on the Apple Watch. 
but that's less likely. At this point last year, we'd already seen clues about heart health because of Apple's heart health study, and we haven't seen any of this for either glucose monitoring or blood pressure. So if it was me, I would bank on sleep tracking. Fitbit, Samsung, Garmin, and Polar all have this feature on their wearable devices, and they're continuing to do more and more cool things with it. Now, Apple has been lagging behind mainly because of the issue with the battery, that it still doesn't last the full 24 hours you would need to have true sleep tracking. Of course, you can do this with a third-party app, but to have it natively, Apple needs to solve the issue with battery life on the Apple Watch, and maybe that's what they're tackling for the Series 5. Now, the other wild card that we really haven't heard much about, but I'm gonna throw it out there just because, is a design change. So we saw kind of a design change in the Series 4 with a slightly rounder watch face and that larger screen, but what about overhauling completely and making a round Apple Watch? But even with all this new information, we still know very little about the Apple Watch Series 5, at least in comparison to what we know about the iPhone 11. So here's your chance to weigh in. What would you like to see in the next Apple Watch? Is it the round design? Is it the camera or more health features? Let me know on the comments section below. Tweet me, you know the drill. Now for the other big Apple news this week, the public betas are out in the wild. Apple jumped the gun this time around, launching the public beta for iOS, macOS, and iPadOS a few weeks earlier than we had expected. And by now, you probably have a good sense of what's coming in these software updates, given, well, the keynote and the two developers betas that came before the public beta. So there's nothing really new, but it is finally a version that I'm comfortable installing on my own phone. So I got to test a few things out for myself. I'll spare you the play-by-play -play and focus on things that you guys were most excited about. When I asked you last week, it seemed like dark mode was at the top of the list. So there you have it. It is a lot easier on the eyes, especially at night, and it's pretty easy to activate by 3D touching on the brightness option from the quick settings, or you can set it automatically in the settings app. And I hadn't even thought about the battery implications that dark mode may have on your phone, which we can't really test out now because it is just a beta, but still. Arpita Garwal said, I'm personally most excited about the dark mode feature in iOS. Anything that could allow me to extract more juice from that little iPhone XS battery is a plus for me, and I'm totally with you. While Eric Sunshine said, I'm just excited that they're changing the volume box to the side and not the exact middle of the screen. And there you have it, it is much nicer. While David Boyd wanted a demo of Apple's Street View version, which is actually called Look Around. And a lot of you also mentioned the video editing tools in iOS 13, which so far happen to be my favorite features. Now the Photos app in iOS 13 basically has all the cool editing tools that you'd find on an app like Instagram, but not just for photos, it's for videos too. So you don't just rotate a video, which is life-changing in and of itself, but you can crop, reposition, or even tilt the angle of your video. You can also sharpen it, tune the contrast, the saturation, there's noise reduction, there's a vignette effect, and you don't have to export it as a new file. And I know what a lot of you are thinking, and yes, you could already do this in third-party apps, but doing it natively cuts out the middleman and makes it a lot faster. Now, I get to test out a lot of phone cameras, and the iPhone consistently wins in terms of video. I'm not talking about stills, you can argue that one as much as you want, but for video, I still always reach for the iPhone, and to me, this feature on iOS 13 puts it even above the competition because now you get to do all of these things natively on the phone. Now the question for you becomes, should you download it? Unofficially, and don't quote me, I will say go for it if you have an iPhone 6S or beyond, that is. Sure, I've had my issues with apps randomly crashing once in a while, and I think the battery is taking a hit, but it is worth it for these features alone and for having them two months early. Officially, I have to say, do it at your own risk, do not download onto your main device, and back up everything before you do it, in case you have to revert back or you never see your stuff again. We have plenty of articles on how to download it if you're interested on cnet.com, but basically all you have to do is log on to beta.apple.com and sign up for this public beta program. 
That does it for this week's show, but I really love hearing from all of you, so please keep those comments coming. Tell me about your Apple Watch wish list and any hidden features you may discover if you are bold enough to download the public beta this week. Next week, we'll be back a day early because of the 4th of July, so come back for more Apple Core.